Welcome to the Archaeology Studio. Today's episode considers this question. What is a midden? The word midden occurs often in archaeology, although the definition can be vague or misunderstood. Despite these problems with the definition, middens are famous in world archaeology. People have created these piles, heaps, or mounds of midden debris all around the world and throughout the last several thousands of years. However these middens may be defined, certainly they can offer valuable information for learning about the past. In a standard definition, a midden is a heap or mound of discarded waste or refuse. In archaeology, the word midden generally refers to a dense concentration of discarded food remains, but the word has gained different meanings and implications, stretching back at least as early as the 1800s when archaeology still was developing as a field of study. In the middle 1800s, the Danish zoologist Japetus Steenstrup had noticed that some occurrences of shells were relics from natural beach deposits, while other occurrences resembled the remains of past human activities. For those human-created piles, Steenstrup proposed the word Kuchenmodinger, meaning a kitchen heap. The modern English word midden comes from a similar Scandinavian origin. A Middle English word was known as mithing. Since the middle through late 1800s, archaeologists have referred to midden sites, kitchen middens, shell middens, shell mounds, and other variations. When people discard their shells after cooking or eating, then the amounts of shells rapidly can accumulate into large heaps or mounds. Some of the largest mounds expanded across more than 100 meters in diameter and several meters high. In principle, a midden could include almost anything inside it, but the most abundant materials in archaeological sites tend to be the shells. Shells are durable, and their calcium carbonate makes them alkaline and therefore resistant to the decay that ordinarily occurs in soil acids. In cases of dense shell debris, the alkaline content can preserve other adjacent organic materials such as bones or even textiles somewhat longer than might occur in a more acidic setting. Most shell middens or shell mounds contain at least some amounts of other findings, such as broken pottery, stone tools, and animal bones or teeth. When viewed at a large scale, though, shells are the major visible components. Some of the most famous midden sites are the large heaps or mounds of debris. They are highly visible and they have become characteristic landmarks in some areas. These locations and their surroundings could gain additional cultural meanings, associations, or contexts. Of course, not every midden was made into an impressively large mound or landmark. Many middens cover footprints of just a few square meters, and they were piled maybe less than half the height of an adult person. Often, middens have been found beneath the ground, where sedimentary layers have formed around them and then covering them. In a subsurface context, the classic mound shape of a midden may not be detectable. The component pieces likely have shifted in their positions through time during the processes of sedimentary buildup, vegetation growth, and water drainage. The individual pieces of discarded refuse could be dispersed or diffuse, or they could be packed together densely. The ratio can be variable when comparing the amounts of midden material versus the amounts of sedimentary particles. Within a midden site or deposit, the most abundant materials are the food remains. Some archaeologists use the term midden remains synonymously with the term food remains, or perhaps eco-facts. These terms encompass all of the possible pieces of animal bones, teeth, and shells, as well as the remains of burned wood, charcoal, preserved plant remains, or anything else from the natural world that was used and discarded by people. 
When viewed in isolation, each piece of shell, bone, or other midden material looks like it could be a purely natural occurrence. No signs of cutting, slicing, drilling, polishing, or other diagnostic traits would indicate an artificial creation or an alteration of a formal artifact. The surrounding context can offer clues about a natural versus cultural origin. For instance, the classic mound shape of a midden is unlikely to occur naturally. Burned or charred material offers another indicator of a probable cultural origin. The represented biological taxa could reveal multiple habitat sources or seasonality, either unlikely or else impossible to occur together naturally. Additionally, constituent materials of definite artifacts tend to be the most convincing evidence of a culturally created midden. After identifying a midden site or deposit, then several research questions could be developed. When did people create a pile of debris? And how many individual episodes of discard could have been involved? Did people dispose the waste near their houses or in other designated dumping areas? Did people burn the piles, drop them into the ocean, or treat them in some other manner? What kinds of foods are represented? And what more could be ascertained about the diet, seasonal differences, access to various habitats, and change through time? As interesting as these questions might be, the first step is to identify a site or deposit as a midden. Next, those questions could be developed, and ideally, they can be answered through the archaeological evidence. In concluding this episode, I hope that I have clarified about what middens are in archaeology, among the many topics and questions that could be explored further. What are your interests and ideas? Thank you for watching here. I will see you in the next video.